All right, everybody. Uh, this is Just a Gita podcast, episode number 35, with a very special guest, Clark Gregg, um, star of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and his newest movie, Trust Me. Um, our panel, as always, is uh, Jordan Short. Hey. Uh, Rami Sharani. Yo. And, uh, and myself, Ahmed Sharani. Um, you may notice that we're missing someone very special here. That's uh, Adam Cousins. Uh, Adam is away on business right now and um, couldn't join us, unfortunately, but we do miss you. Um, Rami? Yeah, uh, so we just want to quickly thank our sponsors, uh, Pohada Gear. Uh, you can check them out at uh, pohadagear.com, P-O-R-R-A-D-A-G-E-A-R.com. Uh, they sell, right now, they're, they sell shirts, uh, and I believe they're selling hoodies, beanies, and they'll have all sorts of other stuff going on there. Uh, Adam's not on right now, but he's a huge fan of those shirts. I am too. Like I wear that, I'm worn that shirt to death. Uh, yeah, probably they, gonna yeah, send us some more. Send us some more. Well, what's going on? Yeah, well, we should get some more. But, but anyhow, uh, we're we're gonna be uh, we're gonna have a contest on the. Oh, Jordan's wearing one right now. Uh, we're we're gonna have a uh, contest on the Facebook page. We've already given away one shirt. We're gonna give away another shirt and also a beanie. And yeah, check them out. Okay, sounds good. And uh, without further ado, Clark Gregg. Um, Clark, if you don't mind, could you, uh, I guess <laughs> you don't really need to introduce yourself, but if you could tell us a little about, about your uh, jiu-jitsu journey, how you got started, um, how long ago did you start? Like, Believe it or not, there's not much info out there about you in regards to jiu-jitsu. Um, no, nor know. should there be, really. I, <laughs> um, certainly not in the context of like competitive jiu-jitsu, Practitioners, I God, I add it up now. I may have to look on IMDb because <laughs> Dave, my pal Dave Mamet uh, was directing a movie called Spartan, and uh, he was he had started doing uh, jujitsu with a guy Hanato Magno, a cousin of the Machados out here, and he and he dragged me in there and said, you know, you're playing kind of a badass special secret service agent. You should, you know this will help you. And I said, do, do I have any fights in this movie? I would love to think I do. He said, no, you don't. I just want you to go in there. And so he took me in and I rolled a couple times and I liked it, but I was a little bit, you know, I was, as any white belt knows, I was really getting suffocated and choked out a lot. And um, <laughs> at first I didn't really dig that. And uh, <laughs> um, uh, But then I found myself going back a couple of months later and, uh, and uh, really getting hooked, and um, I kind of think that was about 12 years ago. And I, you know, I had to. I would leave town and go do a job and not do it for a while. I'm trying to find out how long ago this was, yeah, and uh, and I would always end up back there studying with Hanato and uh, with uh, one of his black belts, uh, a guy Hikardo Wilkie, and. Um, you know, you turn around, you've been doing it a while. I finally, I don't know, it must have been five years till I got a blue belt. And, uh, and just a couple of months ago, they gave me a, uh, a brown belt. I really feel like I should be like a light brown belt, like a latte belt or something. <laughs> <laughs> for, for sure. With, uh, with, how, with how much you've been I mean, you've been doing it for a long time, clearly. Ten years. Ten years. I see right there. Ten years. Ten years. Jeez. So ten years. Um, how, what, what, what's your training been like? I, like? I know you said in the beginning you were doing it. Uh, kind of sporadically, you did it that first time, and then a couple months later, you jumped in. But what, what's it like now? Like, how, how do you stay on top of it? Um, you know, honestly, I, in a way, my journey's been very slow because I work a lot. It takes me out of town. Sometimes Hanato will set me up with somebody, uh, Gracie. It turns out all Brazilians are related. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioners are all cousins of somebody, like Gracie or Machado. So I've been in Albuquerque and hooked up with people when we were shooting the Avengers. I rolled a couple times. But mostly I, I kind of go, I get in there once a week if I'm lucky twice. And I mostly roll with uh, Hanato. You know, I've been, I've been in classes sometimes every once in a while. I can, the, the kind of macho factor, and believe me, some of it's coming from me, um, gets going more in the class and I've kind of tweaked things and uh, knocked myself out of stunts. <laughs> on jobs I was doing, so I generally roll with him. He's he's just a magnificent teacher, and he teaches at a place called Street Sports here in Santa Monica. And he's bigger than me, <laughs> and you know he's been doing jujitsu since he was a kid in Brazil. And uh, he's just taught me so much. 
Barry, he says, oh, he says, it's funny, I, I love jiu-jitsu because it's a life lesson. And the main reason I went back was exactly that kind of panicked feeling I would feel when I, you know, started to have somebody, you know, when I was, um, you know, had somebody in my guard but was getting pressured or somebody had mounted me, uh, I would panic and I would feel really edgy from it. And he would say, just, halashe, you got to relax, man. you got to respira, you got to breathe. <laughs> and um, all that stuff really clicked for me. I felt like it was useful for me in life to kind of, learn how to stay relaxed even when the stakes got high. And um, and it's such a slow journey. It took me three or four years before I realized he wasn't kidding that any good jiu-jitsu started to happen when you actually relaxed. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, ama it's amazing that you mentioned um, you had to skip out on stunts and, and what have you, but uh, the, the one question I had is, does your work, like your line of work, do they ever say like, skip jiu-jitsu, don't do anything dangerous, um, we need you to be healthy, because, I mean, in jiu-jitsu you can get elbowed in the face, you can, you know, maybe an armbar gets tweaked a little too hard or whatnot. Do, 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 Honestly, do, it's, uh, it's one of the main reasons why I mostly do privates with Hanato, not that he doesn't just torture me and choke me <laughs> out all the time, but it's, it, I just can't take that chance. They don't really, they don't overmanage me that, that way on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. In fact, the stunt guys God, four or five of them do jujitsu as well. Oh, and wow. they love, when I got my brown belt, they were really excited. And they started adding, like they added a choke for Agent Coulson in one of the episodes, a kind of rear naked choke off the floor. And they're always looking for jujitsu stuff for me to do. I'm determined to get a flying arm bar in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I was, yeah, was going to say, I think I've noticed about two rear naked chokes on S.H.I.E.L.D. I think it was two of them. And yeah. I was wondering, like, and you you said you're going to try to get some more jujitsu in there, and that'd be great because sometimes when I get, you know, like, not not your shows, but you watch other ones and they're doing fight scenes and stuff, do you ever kind of cringe sometime and go, man, that's that's totally off, man. They're, they're, they're wrong there. Like, do, do you ever get, do you have any input on, on some of this, the scenes in there? Absolutely, I do. And, you know, a lot of times in some places the stunt guys are really trying to earn their money by doing some crazy rope flying kicks and stuff and, it just it looks a little too balletic, but the guys on our show, especially with what's going on here in our first season, there's just a lot of kind of close quarters fights where no one's one person's not going to walk away. Yeah. They've been keeping those kind of pretty tight and brutal. Um, but you know, it's it's why people who just do jujitsu don't survive in MMA. They're, you know, in that kind of fight with a multiple opponents, there's got to be some striking. So I'm actually letting those stunt guys kind of teach me some kind of Krav Maga, some kind of striking stuff that I probably needed anyway. Awesome. So, so are you, you're dipping into a little bit of striking as well as what you're saying, or you're trying to stay away from that? No, before, before I did jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, I was, always, I was always looking for a workout that was fun. You know, yeah. I don't love jogging. I get bored. Once, in, once out of every ten times, I'll enjoy it. But I didn't, I never... I had to do another movie about two years before Spartan where I played basketball, and I loved basketball, but I played soccer in college and was a bad basketball player, but I used that, of course, to hire a really good basketball coach, a guy who now, he's now a shooting coach for the uh, Oklahoma Thunder, um, and he taught me how to shoot, and I, and I started playing basketball religiously, and I noticed that I would run till I was soaked in sweat if there was something fun going on, and Hinato still is, you know, like, dude, you go to basketball three times a week, you can't come here more than once, and <laughs> I can't help it, I love basketball, but the, um, before that, I even, I was boxing, just because even boxing, as hard as it was, and the guy, you know, I'd get hit a lot, because I wasn't very good at that either, that was fun, there was something to try to improve at, yeah. uh, so I spent two or three years doing kind of boxing sparring and trying to learn that technique before I did jiu-jitsu. Uh, but I love jujitsu. I rolled this morning. Oh, nice. It, 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 go ahead, Adam. No, I was gonna say we're we're complete jujitsu nerds. Like I, I I don't know if you're all into. Um, are you into the competition scene? Um, whether I don't know if you've competed or not, but um, are you into watching uh, some of the professionals out there compete as well? Or yeah, they have a lot of tournaments here. Uh, it's been really hard with work lately, but uh, I always try to go to the Pan Ams here. I haven't competed. Um. I don't have a screaming desire to compete. I just, I just, the guys I see compete are so good, and they clearly are able to do it a lot more often than I am. 
there's a part of me that wants to enter into a senior division contest, even if I lose right away, just, you know, to climb that mountain. Do you guys compete? Yeah, uh, we're, uh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we we're all, all avid competitors. Compete. Yeah, we oh, compete really? quite yeah. often. And um, I was at the um, World Masters last October, which is, um, as you know, it's 30 and over. And yeah. it's, it's really cool because they actually branch off. They break the divisions into increments of five years as well. So you got you're know, from 30 to 35, 36 to 39, 40 to 40, you know, etc. So um, if you're looking to compete, like, and if you want to go against guys, you know, that are, you know, similar in age and maybe don't have as enough time to compete, uh, sorry, to train as, as, you know, as as you do, because what you have, what happens is that when you go against an adult or something, as they consider it, which is 18 to 29. Um, you're facing guys who train full time. Like their job is jujitsu, and yeah, it's tough, you know. But if you do world masters, I think you'd do well. I think you'd do well. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would have been much happier. Uh, I was just starting to feel like maybe I deserved the purple belt when he handed me this. Other one, so. <laughs> That's what. Uh, it, it almost feels like because I I know like when I got my blue belt and then when I got my purple because I'm I'm uh, we're all purple belts actually yeah we're just purple so belts. when we got our purple belt or I know when I got my blue belt I was like man like I do not deserve this and then the purple belt came around I'm like not yet <laughs> just not yet I was just feeling comfortable with the blue I know but then there's the next level after that which is you go through that like well everybody feels like that and then I, then I would go to the next level which was okay but I really don't <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's a good sign though like I think that uh, it's it's one of those things where you don't feel like you deserve it because you realize that there's so much more to learn and that like by the time you get to black belt you still only learn so much. And yeah, that, it's, true. So, um, it's true. Um well, it's, yeah. Oh no, sorry. Uh, one other uh, one other question is um, for training. So um, do you just go in and get shown a technique? I like I I guess I want to know your training um, curriculum how how it's broken up. More is interested. Um, is it um, like yeah, go ahead, sorry. It varies a lot, you know. Uh, I really, like I said, for the most part, I have a one-on-one -on -one thing with this kind of master black belt, Hanato Magno. And every once in a while, he'll bring in another, somebody else, uh, you know, either my same belt or another black belt, just to kind of, you know, either they'll take turns rolling with me if he wants to kind of really punish my conditioning. Sometimes he'll really work on a specific series of skills. Some days we'll do stand-up. You know, today we were working on a bow and arrow choke, a bunch of different variations on it. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll do that for 30, 40 minutes, and then the last 20 will be, you know, just freestyle rolling and just, you know, he's kind of, in, he's so good. He's just always trying to, he'll leave the arm out that would lead me, if I have a brain in my head, to try the things we just worked on. Yeah. Yeah. But half the time when I go for that and think he's trying to teach me that, it's really a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a trap. It's always a trap. They're, they just leave it for you just so that they can do something crazy to you. That's it. That's all it is. Never yeah. take the bait. <laughs> do, you, do you guys do any uh, any drilling at all? Like um, right now, a big thing in the jiu-jitsu community now is a lot of guys will drill a specific move like a thousand times. Like nothing, like for example, an arm bar setup nonstop. Do you, do, you, do you guys follow anything like that or is it like you said, purely live live sparring. No, God, I mean, we did this, we did the same kind of bow and arrow choke variation from the, from a kind of half mount with one hook in, really the mount, a kind of, with the, from the back mount with a hook in today. We must, we did it like 40 times, and I was 20 times maybe, and I was like, okay, I'm sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crazy. really there, honestly, I, I'm there to have fun. I'm a competitive person, so I try to always improve. Yeah. But, it's a fun workout to me that's really challenging. Um, and, I, and he really kind of gets that and kind of keeps it fun. There's definitely, I don't know, there's just, it's, it's, it's a fun chess match. He's like, he's kind of like a much better tennis player hitting with me, and I'm always trying to kind of get the ball back at him and see if I can't get one by him once in a while. <laughs> and he's so... He's so good at it that he kind of finds a way to kind of work in the lessons. I mean, I've also taken stunts in there for that I was working on with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and kind of try, found ways to practice them with them or found ways to kind of, you know, I don't always tell my stunt guys this, but um, <laughs> that I'm trying to find a way to work jujitsu into the thing so that I can go in there and pitch it. Um, I recently wrote and directed a movie uh, called Trust Me, 
that's coming out uh, May 5th or 6th, May 6th on uh, kind of iTunes and On Demand and in theaters a month later. But there was a couple of times when this poor, it's about a loser agent for child actors who, who gets beat up both metaphorically and literally. And there was a yeah. couple of times when, uh, you know, I needed him to kind of be roughed up and I brought Hanato in. He's, he's worked, he worked on Red Belt with Dave Mamet and did a lot of the fights for that. And he came in, he, he played one of the guards who roughs a guy up, he and another guy from our gym. And I had him come on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and do some fighting. He, he's very much kind of, I keep him close by when there's fights to do. Uh, okay, yeah, trust me, that's where the, uh, did the trailer not get released today? That was today, right? The trailer got released today, yeah. Yeah, I, I did see I didn't see I the rough thing. I did not Magno in there as a, as a guard at the courthouse who kind of, he and another one of the guys from the gym put this guy in some pretty good arm locks. Oh really? Uh, that's <laughs> Does that ever happen where you're? Because I mean, you're clearly an avid fan of it. You had the Twitter post about your uh, your brown belt. Do any of the other like actors or anybody you're working with get interested, and then you're you're starting to get them in on jujitsu as well? Does that happen at all? Where I what? Where I get them in on it? Yeah, like you get them to join jujitsu and start it as well. Yeah, so do you like, spread the bug? Pretty much that jujitsu bug. bug. It's funny. Definitely some people have asked me about it. There are other actors who do it. I know about a couple. When I see them, we always talk about it. It's one of the guys who I know who I've seen around a lot is Ed O'Neill from Modern Family. He's a black belt. Yeah. And he loves he loves jiu-jitsu. He's been training for years at a different gym, but he used, he's trained with Hanato sometimes. I know Ashton Kutcher has been rolling lately. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those with, pictures pop up. Well. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, he well, and, and, and Vin Eagle as well. well. Siandro, that's, that's a tough gym. Um, if, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe who he's with. Uh, it's funny. I know that a lot of the people that definitely have had some people curious. Guys, I play basketball with uh, as much as actors are very curious about it. Um, cool. But I think they're almost like a little intimidated to give it a shot. Yeah, for sure. It's almost like you should have a uh, like an actors uh, jujitsu tournament or something. Maybe <laughs> that would be sweet. <laughs> you guys should do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the egos involved. I can't. <laughs> Brazilian guys like Hinata, they're always like, "Oh man, I don't know who's talking. He wants you." <laughs> you going, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want any part of it, O'Neill. <laughs> Did you ever have like a young punk who comes up to you and is like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go after him. You know what I mean? And he comes at you, throws the kitchen sink at you, and then do you just school him or something, or or do you try to avoid that for for work? You know, for for your own well-being, I guess, so you don't get. Um, you mean like in the gym or on the streets? Yeah. No, no, gym, gym. No, no, no streets. <laughs> no streets. Gym. I'm talking gym. Um, it's funny. Uh, you know, when I first started doing it, there was definitely some times, like in the basketball gym, where bigger guys kind of came after me. Where I found myself, you know, able to just neutralize them. You know, not violently or de- destroy them or anything. I could just tie them up kind of end the fight. Um, but I have just so little interest in any of that, you know? It's it's just not the way things are run at that gym. Yeah. It's one of the things that actually made me fall in love with it was, you know, the amount of toughness of Hanato or Ricardo, these guys, you know, some of the other guys at the gym, and how completely I had to trust them, you know, uh, with... It would be so easy to hurt me if anyone got macho, even for a second. You know, which you know if you've ever done an, an arm bar or a heel hook, you can break someone's ankle. You can do permanent damage. I'm 52. I can't, I, you know, I, I cherish the time I have left to do these sports, and I just trust these guys. It's just not what it's about for any of them, and I don't think anyone who was kind of trying to flex that way would last long at street sports. Yeah. For um, sure. okay. yeah. It's totally like true. Though. I mean, even in at our club, you get like white belts. You know, they get close on a purple belt, and they want to finish that. They want to get that submission, right? That's a feather in their cap. But I could just imagine with some of these younger guys who come in, and they're like, "I want to get Agent Colson." <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what I was getting at. Like, but I guess like like Clark mentioned earlier, that gym is just does not attract that certain. Like, I'm sure your instructor weeds those kind of people out right away. I, you know, I don't know. Like I said. <laughs> It may be one of the, I, you know, I've definitely, I've definitely had people kind of with that agent Colson's going down, gleaming their <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, But I, so far, the, the few times that happened, I've been lucky to, 
you know, let them get that energy out until they were tired enough, and then um, and then it was time to take a nap. <laughs> Um, I guess you know one one other question. It's about uh, now. You, you also train with uh, Machado as well, correct? Um, Hegan is a friend of Hinato's. He comes okay. to our gym for the belt ceremony. Sometimes I'll get in there and kind of hear him talk, see a presentation of his, but mostly Hinato. Okay, yeah. Sorry, I guess I was looking at your your Twitter picture and I saw I saw he was yeah. there. He was there. Okay, okay. So family, yeah. Okay, so um, I guess I guess that doesn't that answers my question. I was just going to ask you, dear boy, <laughs> awarded you the belt or not? But um, but yeah, uh, like I said, we 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 really thank you for coming on. Um, it's been about twenty minutes. However, uh, we would like to uh, hear about any upcoming projects, um, any you know movies coming up, um, you know stuff like that. And again, this is not live, so uh, I can I can edit all this out, uh, you know, later. Just a little banter here, but yeah, if there's anything else. Uh, please, please share it. Uh, thanks. You know, actually, I was able to work in the the plug for Trust Me because it was Jermaine, and um, cool. I, the only other thing I got going on is we got the last three episodes leading to the season finale of Agents of Shield, where um, those who like combat will be amply rewarded. <laughs> nice. Yeah, cool. So everybody who loves jujitsu, you should check it out. I'm assuming. <laughs> any, kind of, any kind of martial combat, it's it's about okay. to get nasty. Clark Craig know. said there's going to be a flying arm bar in there. So, <laughs> so, I don't know about this, but I'm going to work one in. What, uh, <laughs> what part of Canada are you guys in? Uh, I'll start with me. Uh, we're all by the Toronto area, actually, oh, yeah. just just about 40, 40 minutes away from there. Um, and I'm actually in uh, San Francisco right now. Uh, yeah, I live here for now. Actually, we're going to LA for uh, Worlds next month. We'll be meeting there. Yeah, Worlds we'll be next month, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You and should go. Should check yeah. it out. <laughs> if I end up in Toronto, like every other actor in town, I'll uh, I'll hit you guys up. Tell me some place where I can go get a workout in. Oh, yeah, well, for sure. Yeah, you can come. You can go roll with Jordan there. He, uh, <laughs> except he goes pretty hard though. So <laughs> don't get macho, Jordan. Please, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a pleasure talking to you guys. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.